change the name on the screen. Can you all see our faces uh, over there on the top? For us, it's on the top right. Nigeria, wow. Uh, we've got people from all over. We had a little icebreaker question. We asked where are people from and uh, who's the most famous or a famous musician from where you're from, which was kind of fun. You can keep talking about that in the chat as we get started. Uh, but we're your hosts. I'm Eric Nordoff. I'm Chrissy. Nordoff. And Nick Morrow is hey also here. Nick's our director of writing worship. We're expanding, we're growing. Um, thanks to you guys uh, and this beautiful community, we're seeing a tremendous amount of growth and a lot of people wanting to learn how to write worship songs. And uh, we have no one better, I believe, in my biased opinion, than uh, Chrissy Nordoff to teach us about, uh, about just that, how to craft heartfelt worship songs, songs for the church. And, um, and then after Chrissy teaches, uh, Nick and I will talk a little bit about our upcoming mentorship and our brand new writing club, which is a, both are fantastic resources. They're really essential, foundational to everything that we do. Everything that Chrissy's gonna be talking about in the Heartfelt Songs webinar, we practice and we dive into a great bit of detail, intensive, in, more intently um, and intensively, I guess, uh, and uh, uh, in the mentorship and the writing club. So we'll talk about that and then we'll have plenty of time for Q&A. We'll also be looking for your questions in the webinar chat. So if you have questions along the way, um, everybody, if you could, you can lower your hands right now. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll just be uh, talking in the chat and interacting with you in the chat. While Chrissy's teaching, Nick will respond to some questions maybe that might come up. Nick, you'll, you'll monitor the chat. I'll look, that, look over that as well. But um, for now, let's, uh, let's give it up to uh, our fearless leader, uh, and founder of Writing Worship, uh, who has a huge heart and a love for the church and a love for songwriting and the co-writing room and a love for songwriters. Mm -hmm. Here she is, Thank Chrissy you. Nordoff. Take it away. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with you guys today. And uh, it's amazing to see where you guys are all coming from. So um, God bless you all. I'm so happy to see you and be here with you and spend a little time with you today. Um, I started writing songs when I was really young. Um, I didn't realize that's what I was doing. And I don't think my, my family really knew what I was doing either. Um, we didn't have a lot of uh, songwriters that lived in my hometown. So, uh, you know, I've, I've since moved to Nashville and learned a whole lot about writing songs um, since moving here and have done many co-writes and have learned along the journey. Um, really, and just learn by trial and error and um, have been in this town now for 26 years, which is crazy. Um, but it's been a huge learning experience for me. And um, I'm happy just to pass on a little bit about uh, what I've learned kind of as I've, as I've gone. How many of you guys have written a song before? I would love to know that. Um, first of all, how many of you have written a song? And then how many of you have written a worship song? If you wouldn't mind sharing that in the chat, I'd love to hear a little bit more. Um, okay, lots. Okay, awesome. Sorry about this phone going off on Eric's computer over here. <laughs> a little distracting. Um, awesome. Okay, I see those coming in. So, um, so I grew up on a farm really in the middle of nowhere. And um, uh, my parents have lived on that same farm really this entire time. They're getting ready to sell it now, which is crazy. Um, but so I moved after college, actually, I went to school at Anderson University in Indiana, um, had a chance to study there uh, with Gloria Gaither for a short amount of time. One semester, she was my songwriting professor. Um, because of that, I have decided this last year was asked to teach at Lipscomb University and I'm currently doing that right now. So I'm teaching a class at Lipscomb, um, which is titled Songwriting for Worship um, and moved here after college and, and really started chasing the, um, the artist thing. Uh, and that was 
really the only option I thought I had. Um, and at the time it was kind of long before there were any uh, really worship leader positions that people were taking. Um, it was really before that big wave of worship had hit, but it gave me an opportunity at that point in time to learn a lot about churches. We traveled and um, did the independent artist thing for quite a while, had a record deal that fell through. That was kind of um, an interesting time, but I learned a lot about the industry. I learned a lot about the church. We were on the road a lot traveling and um, just getting opportunities to meet people face to face. And I loved that part of that season of the journey, meeting people face to face and getting to have those conversations one on one um, and just seeing many different churches and many different perspectives, many different ways that people were worshiping at that point in time um, and have continued. That's continued to grow. Um, so it wasn't really until 2008 I was pregnant for the third time. And I had just felt a shift in my heart, but I couldn't verbalize what was going on. I knew um, I had been writing songs for my own things that I had been um, sharing as an artist. And, and I hadn't really done a whole lot of songwriting for others at that point in time. Um, but at that, during that season, I wrote a song called uh, Your Great Name. And it was the very first time that I had seen a church really get together to do a live recording and uh it was it was an interesting experience i was very pregnant i had been sick i didn't know um who was going to be singing that song that night when our church was um rehearsing but someone else actually when they called the song up someone else stepped out to sing it and that was a hard thing for me um it was a hard uh, transition because I had always sung my own songs and this was the first time um, that I wasn't going to sing my own song so I felt the Lord say to me stand in the choir and give it all you got tonight and I want to show you what can happen if you let go of a song so I stood in the choir that night and before the end of the first verse the congregation was on their feet and um, I got to watch the Holy Spirit move I learned through that song several things. Um, one was that I could stay home and raise my babies like I wanted to do. I was about to have our third. Um, and my songs could actually do the traveling. The Lord could use my heart to travel through songs. And, um, and it, was, it was really an earth shattering concept for me. Although I knew it was an option before, I didn't understand how it was an option for me. Um, but that song really opened doors. It taught me how to let go. Um, it taught me the importance of song in local church as well. And it taught me um, how those songs in the local church can mark seasons and bring encouragement and bring hope. And um, that became really important to me after experiencing, you know, watching the impact that it had on my people, the people in my sphere and my world. And that was really the reason why that song, you know, came to be was because of that. Um, but it was a fun thing to watch unfold. Uh, and I began to write more and more for the purpose of giving other people a song to sing. And that has been a beautiful part of my journey as well. So I love that I get to many times these days sit in a room with either an artist or a lot of times it's, um, somebody that comes in from a worship team from a church or sometimes several people from a worship team come in to write songs for their community and now i will see myself um, sometimes as really a translator in the room so i like to listen to the stories and i like to hear what's happening in the church and what things are important to them in this season and then i like to help those people translate their story into song. And I even, this is crazy uh, to say out loud, but this is true. Uh, when I hear people's stories, I hear it in song. So if you tell me your story, I'll start to hear a melody and sometimes lyrics happened to me yesterday even, um, as I had a co-write yesterday with a girl that was new to town and she was very nervous about co-writing. We ended up having such a beautiful day. She just shared her story and I could hear um, some things that came out and other people in the room did as well. 
Um, I'm going to ask you guys another question. I would love to know how many of you have co-written before. So if you have co-written a song, go ahead and, and let me know that in the chat here. Um, so because of that whole journey and, and, uh, and that whole journey through Nashville and learning kind of those nuances between uh, what someone says and what their actions are showing me and what the industry works like and, and how all of those things um, were laid out before me and how I experienced them and um, songwriting and the artist thing. And there was just a lot that I had to navigate um, moving here as a young single girl. I didn't meet Eric until after I had moved here and we ended up getting married and have, our, have had our family here and raised them here. We, we love this community. We love our town. Um, we both love the music industry as well. Love being here to support. Um, but I will say for the first probably 15 years um, that I was here, I prayed the same prayer on repeat. Lord, would you give me a mentor, a female that has learned how to navigate family and ministry and industry? Um, and I've asked, had asked the Lord that many, many times. Felt like it was a good prayer, an earnest prayer. And the Lord never answered that prayer for me. And that 15th year that I was here in town, um, I asked him why, Lord, why have you not answered that prayer for me? And I heard the Lord say at that point in time, I heard him say, be what you need. And so I began to try to shift my perspective from um, what could I learn from someone else to I've learned some things. I don't know everything, but I've learned some things and surely there's something I can share. And I began with just gathering girls in my living room and encouraging other female songwriters. Um, and so you'll see over here on the screen, there's a Brave Worship um, picture here. And that is kind of the result of that group of girls that gathered in the living room. So from that, we moved into worship nights. We had prayer events. Uh, we've done conferences. We've traveled and done some writing trips, some songwriting trips. But um, one of my favorite things that has come out of this community is that they've given me a close up view to what songwriters needed now. And um, so I, it's given me an opportunity to help meet their needs and to help create some resources, including this book called Writing Worship, um, that I feel like will give people um, a foot in the door or a step ahead as far as learning that process of writing songs. Um, and so that is kind of that community. Um, we also have a second community now called Writing Worship, which obviously today is a writing worship webinar. And that was really birthed out of that book resource. And we started creating courses and we've continued to grow um, and writing worship, of course, is guys and girls. So it's another um, perspective that way, but it's more of the feet on the ground, going into churches, um, having these mentorship moments with people face to face where we really have an opportunity to go through the deep waters with them about songwriting. And from everything that the Lord has given me as far as ideas for how to create resources for you guys, um, you know, my heart in all of it is to give you what you need. My heart in all of it is to make sure that you have some sort of path and, um, having a path to follow means that you can go farther than I did. And, um, the Lord showed me one time I had a dream, literally, I had a dream, um, that I was marking a trail that I was clearing a pathway and it was a much harder road to go rather than just running through on my own. But I felt like the Lord said, um, you, can, you can run through this on your own and make your own way or you can take a little extra time and you can lay down some, some stepping stones and you can clear some weeds, you can create some beauty, um, you can make a place for people to rest. And, um, when you do that, the kingdom is actually going to go much farther than what you could ever do on your own. And so that is my heart behind really all of this is to just help grow the kingdom of God on the face of the earth. 
And so um, I'm excited that you're here because I know you're here because you want to learn about writing some worship songs from your heart. And I think um, there's no better thing in this time and in this culture, there's no better way for us to bring hope to people, um, to share the gospel, to encourage people, to give a voice to our churches. Um, it's such it's such a great time to be writing songs. And yes, we need new songs. We still need new songs and we need your songs. And I want you to hear that today from me. We do need your songs. Um, okay, so we're gonna, how do we progress this, Eric, right, right here? Mm -hmm. um, right here. Hang on guys, sorry, technical difficulties. Um, so yep, here's the book. It's called How to, Heart, How to Craft Heartfelt Songs. And, um, and it's specifically for writing worship and it's with in mind, it's keeping in mind um, the local church. So, you know, I, my purpose is not to help you write hits that go around the world and um, to expand any certain one person's platform. That is not my heart. Um, and that's not the heart of the book. The heart of the book is to meet people where they are and help them learn some everyday practices in order to grow um, spiritually first and, um, and then help others to grow and to help share that message that will bless the local church. Okay, here we go. So keeping that in mind, actually, I want to go back just a second. Sorry. I want to mention just a couple of things from the book. So um, really starting to craft heartfelt songs should begin well before the crafting part of things. Um, so that should begin with your time with the Lord and with your own heart being in a good place. And so for me personally, um, I've learned a couple of things from friends and from the Lord that I feel like helped me in an everyday sort of way to keep my, my heart ready and prepared to craft those songs. And um, I'm telling you, if you can make sure that you're spending time um, drinking from the well, you will never be a dry songwriter. And so for me, what that looks like in the mornings, I'm in this very room. Um, I always start with reading the word of God. And uh, there are some translations that are so inspiring to creative people that I love. Um, the voice, I'm just, I finished the voice recently. Um, the message is one of my favorites. The passion has some good things in it. I know it's a controversial um, translation. I don't think people even call it a translation. What do you call it? A well, paraphrase. It's, paraphrase. It, it's supposed to be a paraphrase, but the, the controversy is because it's, it's they call it a translation. But. but regardless, it's got some very creative language in there that's very inspiring. So I would say, you know, plug in to the word of God. And I know one of my pastors challenged me as a young mom to read five minutes a day. And, um, and I had always felt so much pressure to have to read like a lot more than that and dig in more. And I'm, I'm kind of an all or nothing kind of girl. And so, um, but when he challenged me to do five minutes a day, it took all the pressure off of me because that, it just seemed like an attainable goal. Like I, at the time, you know, with several young children, it was hard to commit a lot of time, but I knew I could do five minutes. And when I started doing that on repeat, it was just like, um, it was creating this path to my heart that continued to widen and widen and widen. And I fell in love with the word of God all over again. So reading the word is important. Um, and the book will share a little more about that. I also share about two-way journaling in the book, um, which is really just writing down your prayers, your thoughts, um, things that are stirring in your heart, your questions, um, scriptures. Sometimes I'll do, you know, I'll follow one word through scripture. I recently did a study on the word new and just followed that how many times it was written in scripture and, and the story of new through scripture and things like that. Um, but my favorite thing is that once I write my things and my thoughts and my process, I stop to listen to hear God speak back to me. And my life has, has changed since learning that skill. I didn't really understand that skill for a long time. Um, I, I would pray and God would speak to me, but I never sat down to listen. 
with the purpose of listening. If you can learn to listen to God outside of the writing room, you will 100% hear him speak when you're in the writing room. And, um, and that is really important to have that depth of heart. Okay, so uh, reading the word, two-way journaling. And then the other thing that I do every morning is called psalming. And that's basically singing the Psalms out loud. So um, I was reading the Psalms for years and all of a sudden it occurred to me, why am I reading these? I should be singing these. These are songs. They deserve the honor of me singing them. No matter if I get that melody correct or not, um, I love to sing the Psalms out loud. And of course, um, there have been amazing and beautiful moments that have come from that time with the Lord. And, you know, uh, I just, I'm thinking about even earlier this week, I was sitting at the piano upstairs with our 13 year old daughter. We were singing a Psalm. It had all kinds of crazy things in that one in particular, we were laughing so hard. Um, so sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's challenging. Um, I do it every day. I still, regardless, I do it every day. And once, once I finish with a certain translation, I'll switch and do the next one. Um, and, you know, my heart is to learn. I feel like I've learned more about writing worship songs through singing the Psalms than by anything else that I've, that I've done. Um, so, and, and that's including everything, you know, that I've learned just being in Nashville and being in this town. I would say just reading or just singing the Psalms out loud. Um, has far surpassed anything else as far as me learning things about worship. That's in concept. Um, it's in the, the honest approach that David has. It's the story approach that he has to writing um, songs. It's congregational. There's so many things that you learn, and it's, I could do a whole nother conversation just on that, but, um, but there's a ton of treasure in Psalms, and so I would encourage you to sing them. Just sing those Psalms. Um, I've had actually accidentally several songs come out of those times when I'll hear a word or a phrase and I'll take that scripture into a co-write or I'll just write it by myself and I will sing, um, I'll sing that and I'll shape it and steward it into something brand new. And that's a really beautiful way to start writing worship songs from a great place. Um, and you know, they're scriptural. You don't have to worry about that. Um, if you're writing straight from the Psalms. Okay. Um, here's a great question. Um, when we're talking about writing heartfelt songs, okay, so first of all, having your heart in a great place is really, really important. Um, songwriting is such an intimate process, um, and you need to come in clean. You need to come in with a clean heart that is um, honest. And, uh, and when you do that and you walk in to those co-writes, you're gonna have a different experience. Um, this question right here, as it pertains to your church, what is God doing um, either in your heart, like we've talked a little bit about already, or in your church? Um, and knowing those things are really important. So either the things he's been speaking to you in your two-way journaling, which is what I write about a lot of times. If it's not in song, I might write, um, an article about that, or I might write a, just a journal entry on it. Um, but you might know what those things are. What is God specifically doing? I think we need to pay attention to those things. Those are the story. Those are the journey. Um, those are the things that we can see face to face in our lives right now. And when you can see something close up, that is the best time to describe it, to put it into melody, to put it into lyric. Um, is when you know it, when you know it, what is God doing? And when you're co-writing and when you're writing with other people from your church, for instance, um, I think it's really beautiful how God will, um, a lot of times he'll speak a theme. So it's never, um, it's never usually when I go in and I really feel impressed I'm writing for my church. I really feel like God's saying one specific thing. It's very rare that I'm the only person um, that God has been speaking that to. Usually he will intersect many of those conversations. And um, I've been teaching at Lipscomb, like I mentioned, and I've encouraged those kids when they get in the rooms to co-write, 
Look at where your intersections are. Look at where God spoke the same verse to this person as he spoke to this person. Look at where um, you're in your story, you battled health. Well, in this person's story, they're also battling health. What can you do to write about that together? Um, or maybe your, your church has just hired a new pastor and it just feels like a brand new season and everyone is so excited about what God has for the future of your church. Write about that. Write about that. Um, everybody will be feeling those same things, that same anticipation, um, that same curiosity and excitement about what God is about to do. Any of those places where there are intersections in your co-writes, that's where you want to focus your song. Um, and when it's your own heart, when God moves you so greatly um, that it brings you to tears, at least for me, I know if God brings me to tears, if I'm sitting and I'm studying the word or I'm journaling or, um, or even I'm psalming and I sing something that brings me to tears, I have to pay attention to the things that move my own heart because I found if those things move my heart and I'm honest about it, most likely it'll move somebody else's heart too. I've never seen a song um, gain traction and grow beyond me that hasn't first moved my own heart. Um, so look at your own heart and write from that place. Look at the heart of your church and write from that place. Yeah, this one is, is very similarly related. So write from experience, don't write from an observation. Um, and that's, that is a challenge to you. That is because I was just talking to uh, Rebecca White this morning briefly, and um, she was talking about how writing is so relational. If you don't know, um, if you don't have experience in the subject matter, it's going to be a completely different delivery and, um, and it will be received differently from people. If you have a deep connection with the content of what you're saying, and if you've lived it, then it will be received completely differently and you will write it completely differently. So my uh, encouragement to you would be to write from the things that you've experienced, not the things that you've observed. Um, if you know the experience, then run with those things, run with those things. Know what you're writing about, know your subject matter, and your heart will be able to rise to the occasion and write a lot about it. Okay, heartfelt songs are not duplicates, they are originals. Um, I can't tell you how many times I'll have a group come to Nashville from such and such church, and they will tell me, we wanna write a song that, that sounds just like fill in the blank of whatever the last hit just was. Um, they want it to follow that style. They want it to sound that way. Um, they want to recreate that and put their own spin on it a little. So I guess, you know, I have seen many of those come through town on repeat a lot of times, coming in, coming out. I have not seen a song that began as, um, trying to write towards a target of a song that was already created. I've not seen those really fly ever on their own. And I think it's because the target is then recreating something instead of Jesus. Um, and so I just want to say, you know, as far as the target of your song, it has to be, if you're writing a worship song, you can't be double-minded in your co-write worried about this, you know, these things and also the Lord. I mean, uh, there are times and places, and, and we'll talk about this a lot of times when I'm teaching songwriting, but you will sense that the Holy Spirit will move through a right. And if you will allow that to happen, you can come in after you feel the wave rush over. That's the time to come back in and look at the details and and shore things up, of course, there's a time and a place for that. But if the entire right is focused on those details and there's no real moment of true worship and there's no wave of the Holy Spirit allowed in the room um, and that song is meant to duplicate another song, I just haven't seen it work. 
I really think that the Holy Spirit likes to always do new things. And I think he likes for us to be ready to receive new things. And I think part of that then is giving room in the writing room um, for him to move any way he wants to. So basically, when you come in with a target that's very specific, you're also telling the Holy Spirit, actually, you can, you can move in the room today, but you can only move in the room under these circumstances and these parameters, right? If you walk into the room and you say, Holy Spirit, move however you want to move today, that is when I've seen him move in the most amazing, beautiful, miraculous ways creating new sounds and new songs that become the next thing. Um, and unless we're willing to let him move that way, um, we're not gonna get to experience that, especially in worship. So uh, keeping a heart open to the Holy Spirit, not focusing on another song, but focusing on what is God doing right now in this room. All right, worship has to come from an honest place. You can't fake it. You can fake it when you're in any other genre of writing, of songwriting. Um, if you're going through a rough time in your family, for instance, you can go write a country song and you don't need to say a word about it. And you can, um, in some ways, help yourself to process emotionally and maybe get some things out through that country song. Um, you can do that in pop. You can do that in sync. You can do that in rock and roll. You can do that in jazz. Um, you can process feelings like that without talking about it. However, I don't think you can write a worship song and not be honest about the place you're coming from. Um, and that is, you know, that's, it's a deeper level thing. And it's, it's, there's just nothing like it. It is just the deepest type of songwriting. Um, yeah, I'll never forget walking in to, there's a couple rights that come to mind. One of them was one of my dear friends and um, it was our first right after COVID. We were so happy to see each other again. She walked in the room and we sat down to write and, you know, a little chit chat up front. And she basically ended up telling us that she was pregnant because she couldn't keep it from us and write a worship song. <laughs> so there is something about having to bring your whole heart and not hide any of it um, when you're in the writing room. If you can do that, you will write better worship songs because your whole heart will be in the room. You won't be hiding things. Um, you can't fake worship. You can't fake it. All right, keeping things simple is also good and important. Um, of course, when we're in a congregation, we want them to be able to sing with us, right? We want them to be able to uh, sing the melody. Usually we try to keep things within an octave range for the congregation's um, benefit. It's a lot harder for them if it's more than that. And, uh, or giving options, of course, if you end up doing an octave jump or something like that where people can still sing um, on their octave, that's great too. But keeping things simple is good. I would also say that this, this relates to um, not only melodies, I would say lyrics as well. Um, I encourage my students uh, at Lipscomb that as they're writing songs, not to put more than, for instance, one image in the chorus, um, unless it's in a list type format. If you put too many images, actually in an entire song, if you put too many images, it gets very complicated. Um, if you get too wordy, it gets very complicated. If you are not shoring up your syllable counts, if your syllables on line one and line two are much different, but they're on the same melody, that's not good. You wanna keep things simple. Um, so I think that melodically, um, musically even, um, and then lyrically, keeping things simple for the congregation is good. All right, removing distractions. And this, this is kind of the opposite of keeping things simple. But as you're writing, if you notice a syllable count that's off, make sure that you correct it. Um, if there's a melody that, that is very challenging for the average congregational listener or singer, um, make sure that you make it singable in some way for them or make it easier. I, I, uh, 
I feel like when I'm in worship and if I'm singing and there's something wrong with the structure of the song or, I, or something sticks out to me, um, what happens is I actually stop worshiping. And then I'm thinking about the structure thing that if we moved it here, this would help it flow and then blah, blah, blah. And of course I'm a songwriter. So that comes with the territory sometimes, but I know there's that a song is a good worship song. If I worship all the way through it and nothing stops me or stumbles my heart as I'm processing through um, the song. I hope that makes sense. All right, and then I would say, uh, every time you set an expectation, make sure that you meet it. So that means, um, like I was saying before, if your verse one has a certain syllable count on line one, line two, and line three, when you get to verse two, you better do the same thing. Otherwise, you're going to cause people to stop again. And when they stop or they're not sure where they're supposed to sing or how this syllable should fit on this line, then they're not worshiping anymore. And that's not what we want. We want it easy enough for them to worship all the way through. And when you set syllable counts, when you set melodies, you're setting expectations. Make sure that you meet those two. Keep it relatable. So, um, you know, sometimes someone will come in with a story like yesterday, I was just telling you about, um, someone came in with a story and we could write very specific for that one story. But if we write too specific, then other people can't plug in their stories to the song. And I think that's a big part of congregational songs is making sure that everybody can sing it and that it means something to their own unique story. Um, and so sometimes we will keep it a little more general because of that. Um, and we did that yesterday, but still felt like we, we were true to her story, but also made the lyric wide enough where uh, all kinds of stories could plug in to the topics that we were singing about. Okay. So that's, that is it for now. Those are some tips for you guys. Um, just some perspectives that I hope encourage you. And um, I am so thankful that you guys are here with us and that you've stuck through this uh, seminar to hear some of those things. And I really hope that it helps you in your future and your writing. And um, I'm so encouraged just to see so many from around the world um, here with us today. And God bless you guys in your writing. And just know that um, we are cheering you on. We have a heart for you. And we have some more things um, that could be helpful to you that we're going to share with you about right now. So here's Eric. Hey, thanks, Chrissy. I really, really, uh, I love hearing this. I know you, you taught this about two years ago um, on a webinar. And this was just so impactful. We needed to bring it back and share it. And I think even you added even more perspective onto it mm -hmm. from the in, since the last two years of, of writing. So super good um, to have this information. Um, this is great. We're seeing questions come in. So what we'd love for you to do, uh, Nick and I are going to keep track of the questions. And then we're going to answer those questions after we just share about a few of the resources that we have coming up. Uh, and so keep your questions coming, go ahead and, and these will be for question, questions for us, for Chrissy. Um, so we will definitely uh, get back to those. Um, uh, so just wanted to share for a brief minute, a few minutes about uh, your path to a better craft. Um, we have been leading writing worship in the writing worship community since 2019, since the very first, actually 2018, fall of 2018, we had our very first mentorship launch. In this room. In this room as well. And um, we created an online resource called the Worship Songwriter Mentorship, which I'm gonna share with you first. And then Nick is gonna share about the Writing Club, which is newer, but it is very exciting and a really active, engaging community. Um, that we have, which is really where the majority of your, your crafting and your skill sharpening happens. So let me first talk to you about the Worship Songwriter Mentorship. Um, three times a year, uh, we lead a, 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 group, a, a group of songwriters through 
a nine week curriculum. Uh, for nine weeks, uh, it's you are meeting together with as much as 12 other songwriters, 11 other songwriters, 12 songwriters total with or a mentor that you personally mentored. So someone who is an active songwriter, engaged in songwriting that was either part of that original group of, of 12 that you led, uh, or they've since been a part of the mentorship uh, program and are actively writing and have a heart to pastor and shepherd songwriters. And that's uh, what we do. So three times a year in the spring, in the summer, and in the fall. We just finished our fall songwriting mentorship, and we are already thinking ahead and planning for the January launch of the spring 2023 mentorship. And we wanted to invite you in to apply. There is no uh, all we're asking for is if you if this is something you're passionate about, if this is something you're interested in, diving in with 11 other songwriters, sharpening your skills, growing in your craft. Uh, Chrissy teaches uh, each session. There's about 40 minutes of, of tutorial um, and video online training. And then once a week, you get together with those other songwriters led by the mentor. We, we talk through the curriculum. Um, and then throughout the week, you have the opportunity to practice psalming, two-way journaling, co-writing, uh, using Zoom, and it's all really, really beautiful. It was perfectly set up for the COVID, post-COVID era uh, <laughs> of learning online. So we've had people take the mentorship from the UK, Canada, West Coast, East Coast, US, North Central US, uh, Latin America, Australia. Uh, we even had someone from the Middle East Asia. and Asia mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so it's been really, really exciting to see worship songwriters who have a love and a passion to write songs for the church um, come together with their unique perspectives and, uh, and learn and grow and sharpen each other. Um, so that's the worship songwriter mentorship it happens three times a year and you can apply now um, Nick, would you be able to uh, post a link to the application page? Um, <clears throat> I wrote already on here when the next mentorship groups start to meet. They start meeting uh, the week of the 9th. So that would be um, the Monday is the 9th, then the 10th, and then the Saturday, the following Saturday. Uh, oh, that says starting August 15th. Sorry, I forgot. That was a, a mistake. But we will be starting August I'm sorry, <laughs> January 9th. Um, so that's uh, that's some information for you. The price of the mentorship is $4.99 or $149 per month for four months to help you with your budget. So that's all things that you can plan for. There's no need to pay right now. All we're looking for, we have already about a dozen or so applicants. We'll have room for 36 students in the spring. Um, as we'll try to fill those with 12 students. And that usually does happen. So um, apply early. We'll definitely review your application and give you information and feedback. Uh, but that is um, everything you need to know. You can find out more. If you just simply go to writingworship.co, um, there is a link that says mentorship. And when you click on that mentorship button on the menu, uh, you'll see uh, all the information you need to apply for the mentorship. And so for now, I thought I would um, uh, stop sharing my screen and let Nick, uh, Nick, are you able to share your screen? I think so. I All right. That. Awesome. Yeah, we can see it. Wonderful. Take it away, Nick. Talk about writing club. Yeah, well, the mentorship, you asked about the mentorship link. So if anybody's looking for that, it's about five up in the chat. You can look at the mentorship link there. Um, and while I'm talking about writing club, Eric, I, I, you can pop that uh, link in there. So um, I've, I mean, just from a personal perspective, I, I, I put in the chat, I've received so much. I've heard a lot of this stuff. I've read the book, been to the conference, I've done the mentorship and I've heard this stuff a lot, but every time I feel like I go a little bit deeper and I gain um, more. So thank you, Chrissy and Eric for everything you've created that I know that a lot, so many people have benefited from. Um, 
I had the amazing opportunity to join the staff um, as I got to know Chrissy and Eric over the past year to join the staff. And we realized that a lot of our values, a lot of my background, a lot of Chrissy's story and my story as writers was similar. Um, a lot of our background as sort of pastoral or shepherding heart was similar for caring for songwriters. And so um, we started pulling apart a couple of things. One was some of my story, Chrissy's story and others that we've heard. And then, and then the writing worship community in general and saying, what do writers really need? And we kind of landed on two big things, which has been a part of the book and a part of the whole brave and writing worship um, process, which is that songwriters, uh, number one, needed an online space because we're all over the world. I know many of you are joining literally from different continents today and all over the US. And so we need a space where we can convene, uh, gather online, but we need a space where we can have community uh, first of all, and where we can grow in our craft. And so we created the Writing Club uh, as a means of, uh, it's, a, it's a community of kingdom-minded songwriters to grow in their craft and flourish together. And both of those pieces are really important. So growing in your craft as a songwriter is obviously really important, but we also do, don't do that on an island. And at least in my own journey, I've grown a lot more as I've done that with others both mentors and peers, and even people that are maybe newer to the songwriter songwriting journey than me, being a part of a community that uh, cares for me beyond just what I produce as a songwriter, um, but as actually part of a family and a community has been really beautiful. And so there's a bunch of pieces to this. Um, we put together an online community where we basically do kind of a month to month schedule where we said, what if, what if the things that we were doing like at our conference every year and the things that we're doing in the mentorship and uh, the book and kind of all that stuff. What if we could put it all together in one online community? And so it entails a bunch of stuff. And I'm going to talk about some of them here. Um, every month we do a, a bunch of Zoom calls. So we do it all online. Uh, we do it just like this, where we get together on Zoom. And each month we do um, what we call a breakout, where we have a, a call with an industry professional, um, where we pull in somebody. There's a few guys here that were at our conference last year. Um, but we have all kinds of people that we know, whether they're artists, songwriters, people that work for labels, uh, publishers, and we pull them in and we interview them. And then we have a time for a Q&A, basically like we're doing today, where Christy shared for a little while. Maybe you've been to a conference where you've seen this, where there'll be some sharing. And then there's just some Q&A where you can just fire questions at people. And it was really beautiful. Last month, we had um, a guy named Chris Cleveland from a band called Stars Go Dim. He's had a lot of success on the radio and as a CCM artist. And um, we had a wonderful time. I, I interviewed Chris for a little bit and then we just opened it up and had kind of a little small group chat where he encouraged us on our own songwriting journey and, and answered a whole lot of cool questions that our community had. We, um, of course, have tons of co-writing uh, opportunities. This is the biggest thing that we do at least once a week um, on rotating days and uh, times. We have times where you can get together and co-write with other people like you. And we, when we get, usually we have more than one group's worth of, of people that join. So we'll split into two or three or four groups. And we just put people in groups and we start writing. Most of what we do, we write towards um, kind of anything that, that people are working on, whether you're a CCM artist or a worship artist or a Southern gospel, uh, writing towards that or whatever. But one of the things we're really excited about is um, 2023, we are going to be recording and releasing music. Uh, from the writing worship community. You've, um, Chrissy talked about Brave. They did a recording project a couple years ago. And we thought there's so many great writers in our writing worship community and so many great songs coming out of it. And at times there's really kind of no opportunity or place for those writers or those songs to go. And we thought, what if we could start just birthing those songs as a community? And so right now, a lot of what we're doing in Writing Club is writing towards that project, just trying to write really great songs for the church. Um, Eric talked about the mentorship. So the mentorship is actually uh, baked into the cost of uh, the writing club. And so if you sign up for the writing club, um, you'll get the mentorship included in that, as well as all of our online courses. So beyond just the mentorship, which is kind of our flagship course that Christy teaches, um, we also have other courses on things like um, music publishing, marketing, streaming. What else am I missing? Eric and Chris, we've got a bunch uh, of Yeah, we have uh, music production. Production. We've got some uh, questions already today about that. Right. Song admin course you mentioned. 
So, yeah, yeah that, and there's some of these that we get, you know, all the time we're fielding questions about even in the chat today about some of this stuff. And we actually have, we've built like a small, slowly building a little online school of courses that you can take um, that are, are now available to our writing club. So when people have come with me, uh, come to me with a question about things like CCLI or how do I make publishing money from my songs? Am I collecting what I should be or whatever? I can point them to the online courses, which are uh, amazing. And then we also have every month we do uh, what we call our song workshop, where we get together and we just listen through songs. And if you're working on a song, you can bring it. Um, and, uh, and we listen through those. We read the lyrics as we listen to the song. And then I pull in one of our friends from the industry, oftentimes like a producer or a publisher or someone like that. And we just give some feedback on what's working really well on this tune and then what could be maybe tweaked to make the song even stronger. And then we, um, we have discounts on live events for people in writing club. We want it to really be an all encompassing kind of thing with taking all the things that we do in writing worship and putting it into one thing for those of you who are really um, bought in with us. And we've got a, a bunch of amazing folks um, that uh, have been part of and are part of the writing worship community that have come and taught and been guests. This is just a few of them. This isn't an exhaustive list, but uh, this is some of them. So um, we, have, uh, we have all of those things that are available for Writing Club, and it's available for 99 bucks a month. Or if you want to save a little money, you can bundle it all as a, a yearly thing, do a yearly subscription for 990 for a year. So I'll say this about it. If you're thinking about doing the mentorship, but all those other things sound really interesting and you're kind of wanting a long-term or full-time thing around the clock, uh, the writing club is a really good value. Or if you're thinking about taking some of our online courses, which are two or $300 a piece, but you're wanting some of these other pieces, we tried to make it a really, really uh, great value and make it something that it was like I, something that I was looking for a few years ago or that Chrissy when she was younger the kind of thing that would have helped us as writers um, we've just really tried to build that and say how do we help writers take their next steps do it in community and be cared for so I Eric I assume that you've put that in the uh in the chat I did yep I did I put that I put all the info in the chat uh the link to apply so um yeah that there's no need to pay today we're going to be working on applications. We will be accepting applications for the mentorship throughout through the end of the year. And uh, like I said, we start January 9th for the mentorship only. But then the writing club, we're going to be looking at applications this month in November. And we'll be starting to let everyone in who's um, been accepted um, in starting in, in December, as early as December, if they'd like to. So um it's gonna be really fun. Thanks for that, Nick. We just we just think the world and Nick. Nick is a, a very active songwriter um, who has a pastor's heart, shepherd's heart, and he leads our writing club so well, as well as the writing worship community. It's been uh, such a blessing to 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 be partnered with Nick. Um, Nick, you want to give a quick shout out for the song that's kind of rising up in the church right now that you've written? I just want to sure. give you a chance to champion you. You know how much we love all love talking about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love to champion each other. So tell I mean, me. Listen, Chrissy did it flex on us with all of her awesome songs that she's right. had over the years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I have some friends in a band called Sons the Band. If anyone has um, went to the uh, Maverick City Music Tour over the past week or so, they were opening some dates for them. And we got to go see them a few nights ago. And I've written with those guys a lot. Um, but they have one tune that they're um, singing. It's called Only Ever Good that I wrote with them that I've really enjoyed. And it's been yeah. fun to see those guys do their thing. Yeah, we're, we're, we're excited to see that. It's nothing better than to see someone else singing a song that you wrote and leading people into worship. It's like the big greatest honor in the world. Um, okay, should we move into questions, Q&A? Mm -hmm. Okay, the first question that I see from Claire uh, is, and this might be for you, Nick, any advice on what DAW or software you use currently with BandLab as I'm nervous to commit to a program without advice? Yeah, that's great. Um, the, I, the, well, I have a couple of answers maybe. Uh, a great place to start if you have a Mac, especially is GarageBand. So um, I'm wondering if maybe you're a, uh, not a Mac user because you asked about some other ones. There's a couple that are sort of the industry standard, which are um, Logic and Pro Tools. 
Mm -hmm. um, so those are great. And they both have GarageBand is sort of the entry level version of Logic. And then Pro Tools also has some entry level versions. Yeah. Um, okay, no Mac. So that's great to know. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones. I think some people have mentioned some in here, but Pro Tools I know has a sort of a, a light version. I think they even have a free trial version that I mm -hmm. had at one point. And the cool thing about that is it's um, scalable. So if you wanted to kind of keep your production journey going and to be using the industry standard, then um, the Avid Pro Tools kind of suite is nice. But there really are, there's more than ever that are that are good. And I've seen people use a lot of different ones. I would just say, use the one that works well for you. Audacity is a free software, piece of software that you can put on any PC as well. If you want to check Audacity out, A-U-D-I-C-I. T-Y, I think is or A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. Anyway, uh, there you go. Chrissy, what about you? What DAW do you like to use? I have no idea. <laughs> we have a GarageBand course, by the way, if anybody is. Um, that's great for, for beginners um, on how to record a demo on GarageBand. Uh, it was a question we, we got a lot. So if we get a question a lot, we, we usually create a course for it or a mentorship or curriculum around it or bring an expert in that can teach us about it. Um, Shannon asked this, what advice do you have for writing songs with communal language, we, us, et cetera, that are also coming from personal experience? Hmm. Um, a lot of times it's as simple as switching the pronouns. So if it helps you to write it from your own perspective, you can do that. Just don't end your lines with a pronoun so you don't have any rhyming problems. Hmm. But other than that, I think, um, I don't know. I think if you're just thinking about it in your own heart as your experience, your perspective, it's really simply a language shift as you're writing it on the paper. So, um, and then if you do that language shift, then it opens up um, that door for a little more unity when it's sung. And I think that's always a good thing. So I hope that helps. Uh, Stephen asked, how are the plans and developments for the Music Barn coming along? Yeah, how are they coming along? You're the one to answer that question. <laughs> um, slow but sure. We've had several possibilities fall through, honestly. So we're praying for um, investors and properties still right now. And we can't seem to get one without the other. So it's been a tricky process. We're looking at... Um, one property right now, but it's going to be a slow process, I think. So we're in it for the long haul. That's right. Um, and by the way, if you want to learn more about the song barn, go to songbarn.com. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's quite a lot on there. Um, how do we, okay, so you already asked, how do we join the writing worship community? Well, there's a free Facebook community to get involved in there. Um, but as far as how to be mentored, the mentorship and writing club would be the best places to go. Uh, Terry asks, is there a set date, time, place for the 2023 Writing Worship Conference? Um, there's not a set date. <laughs> We're all wondering, inquiring ears wanna hear. Um, there's not a set date, but we usually do it the last week of September. But we're also looking at the re very real possibility of mid-October in Franklin downtown Franklin, Tennessee. Same location. Same location as last year. It's just a matter of setting the dates. Um, we're about 80% sure that it will be um, the, the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of fall break, um, which is usually the second week of October, uh, because we'd have the entire building. We'd have be able to host more writers. Um, there's a lot of great things about that, but we're still confirming a few things. Can we give me give can we give a quick plug to the conference? Sure. Put your hand up if you were there this year. Yeah. Uh, if I this is my first conference going this year. I joined the staff just before we did the conference and got plugged in. And and uh, I can say personally, it was real. It was life changing experience for me mm -hmm. to be part of the community to see the unity, the um, people from from beginner to very seasoned writers everyone was just in there together mixing and it was a beautiful kingdom community and also uh it was in downtown franklin which is one of the most beautiful places in tennessee so mm -hmm. it was just really really fun uh, but also so meaningful I, I i could not recommend it enough as a first time attendee this year it was yeah amazing. it was cool hey by the way i'm just looking at something elizabeth elizabeth fleming said i want to be sensitive to you about this too um, listen, Elizabeth, 
she asked, uh, would love to see something accessible for the poor, clearly not something people can afford in the current economic climate. Completely understandable, and uh, we wanna honor uh, you or anyone who's in that situation. Um, Brave Worship um, offers scholarships. We do have scholarships for a select few people who do have economic issues to join in on a mentorship, um, to join in uh, to the writing club. So if that's Even something, conference, we gave and some we did actually. give Scott, yeah, for conference too. Um, so that's one answer to that question. The other one would be, we have, um, if you go to chrissynordoff.com slash book, um, if you can afford the book or the digital version of the book, um, mention in the community that you'd love to do a book study with a group of people in the, in the Facebook community, which is all free. There's no, no cost to that. Um, and say, hey, I want to meet with a few other people um, uh, via, you know, online, uh, via Zoom or via some other method, maybe even FaceTime to talk through the book and go through the book together. So that's really realistic. Um, we have a, in that, on that webpage, there is a, a book study that you can go through as well that would really be, I mean, if you just read the book, there's a ton uh, through that. Um, and if you, uh, if you need more, or if you have specific questions, Elizabeth, feel free to reach out to Nick or me, Nick, N-I-C-K at writingworship.co. Um, we're, we're super understanding of financial needs. Uh, so uh, don't feel like you're excluded just because we're offering something that has a cost to it. There are costs and expenses related to the mentorship and the writing club. Uh, so, um, yeah, we have costs too. I mean, of course we'd love to do it all for free, but mm -hmm. we just can't afford to do that ourselves. Yeah. These webinars are also really, really helpful. And we try to make the, make those as, as packed with stuff as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, everyone will get the recording and, uh, okay. For Chrissy mm -hmm. from Claire. In your own experience, do you start writing normally with the melody, the lyrics or harmonies, et cetera? What's your usual starting place? Just interesting to see as people all start so differently. Mm -hmm. A lot of times what inspires me, my songwriter personality, which if, if you do any of our courses or the book or whatever, you'll hear about the songwriter personality. My songwriter personality is hearing prophetic and then my second gifting is content. So what inspires me is to hear a chord progression being played or some sort of loop or pad. And um, usually I start singing the melody and lyric together. And um, in this town, people will call that top lining where you're just kind of singing over top of what's being played. And um, that's, that's kind of my style. Okay, mm -hmm. Nick, how about you? I'm a melody first guy, melody and then lyric typically. So I, um, in terms of the gift piece of it, I've just always heard melodies. Like I'll be walking around or falling asleep all the time. I <laughs> just this a couple nights ago and falling asleep and I had a melody in my head. And um, so I just hum those into my voice recorder and um, I listen back and they're creepy and whispery and sound like a serial killer. <laughs> most of the time. Nice. But, uh, that's what comes and even when sitting with uh, other people as they're playing and singing writing lyrics melody is what tends to come to me quickly and I've had to develop my lyric writing to hopefully match or come close to kind of that what is more of a natural gift in the melody uh, as a melody writer to try to develop my um, lyrics a lot so I've mm -hmm. kind of hustled harder on lyrics because I didn't mm -hmm. have to work as hard for the melody part Great. Chidia asks, I have difficulty with verses, but choruses come easier. Any suggestions to help? Co-write. Find somebody that's good at choruses and match Good at up. verses. Yeah. Good at verses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? He said he's not good at verses, but he's, but choruses come easier. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you need somebody good at verses. There's, I think there's reasons why we're not good at everything. And most of the time it's because we're supposed to be partnering with other people. And um, at least in my journey, that's what I found for myself. I find that my observation of you is that you, you tend to, or at least a lot of times I see you writing lists mm -hmm. and sometimes lists are great verse. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. lists, reasons, feelings, um, support, 
all of those things fit in that category really well for verses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and bridge why else with a twist why else with a twist mm -hmm. okay um any other questions here so writing club is different from the mentorship yes uh writing club is different um the mentorship is packed into the writing club so if you want the the full experience of everything related to what we're offering with writing worship writing club is the best uh way to go uh because you will join the next mentorship which is in january so you'll be participating in the mentorship january february march but but in the meantime you're also in the writing club which you'll be sharing songs you'll be connecting with other writers you'll get access to all the courses and and all the zoom calls etc at the same time so um and it's it's something we we think over the course of a year is a really the best financial investment that you can make um and it's it's probably the most cost effective as well um michelle asks if we don't have a digital recording of the song are we able to just submit lyrics oh for the application um we would we really want to hear a song so we do want to hear Probably even recording. a voice memo of the song a phone recording but we would like to hear the song and kind of where you're at uh lyrics are great to submit as well um is the writing club focused on worship songwriting or also ccm it is 90 percent worship songwriting uh we celebrate you if you're writing a ccm song or a, a southern gospel song or any other genre of the christian genre of music we definitely do but we're focusing on worship songwriting uh for sure um okay so uh by the way cubase is something i have set up on my computer because i work with a producer who uses a pc so now we're headed back to some of the comments back and forth question chris asked uh, a question on co-writes if you've done a co-write for example with three others and then one person has essentially gone mia never responds and you want to do something with the song any advice you've done a co-write for example and that person goes missing I would finish it and then just send them an email or however you communicated with them previously saying, here's the changes. Let us know if that's not okay with you. I would move forward. Especially if it's a good song. Yeah. If they're really interested, they'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Here. Yeah. Hannah says, I've done a lot of co-writes, several with my church's worship team. I try to be open and draw inspiration from experience, but I keep being told my lyrics are too personal. How do I strike a good balance between drawing from personal experience, but not being too personal? I try to go where the spirit leads. I think that's a follow up to the other question. Mm -hmm. I think that's just a little bit of trial and error, to be honest with you. When I first started writing songs that I thought were worship, someone pulled me aside basically and said, these aren't worship songs. And I, I did not understand what they were talking about. So I would say pay attention to what works at your church and the language and the pronouns. And then as you go into write for them, remember that you're serving as well in that space. When you're writing for your church or for an artist, you are in a, a frame of mind where you're also serving. So of course you're bringing your whole heart, but you're combining that with a secondary um, uh, purpose in that room and that is to serve. And so I think learning to serve what works well is really just trial and error and observation. Look at what is working. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, Chris, you can take the extended personality test um, at chrissynordoff.com slash book. There's a ton of resources there. I did uh, just mm -hmm. message you as well. Um, Elizabeth says, my grandson recently asked why we do always sing sad songs in church. Do you think we lost the joy in songwriting? I think there's been a lot of new songs about joy recently coming mm -hmm. out of COVID. And I think those just haven't hit the church again yet, but everybody's ready for it. Oh yeah. We need some more. I agree with your grandson. Mm -hmm. Is there a good place to find good, trustworthy co-writers? Well, looking at it. Not to tune our, toot our own horn, tune our own horn toot. toot our own horn uh definitely the the writing club the mentorship 
Um, but if you're just looking to connect with other co-writers, go to the Writing Worship community and Facebook. We do admin that website, that group very well. There are a lot of other co-writers that might not be ready for mentorship, might not be ready for uh, coaching or really investing into their songwriting, but you can find, I don't know how, but the only problem with the right, if you go to that kind of our group, even though we do vet the people that join, we just don't know how they are as, as co-writers. If you want to find a good trustworthy co-writer, co become one yourself, go to the, join the mentorship. Everyone else is in the same boat as you um, and uh, join the writing club because uh, again, um, we're, we're looking to develop good, trustworthy co-writers. Come to conference, experience that as well, because our conference is a great way to connect with people there. Um, Nick? Yeah, I think that's, a, that I agreed with all of that. A, a case in point to the, the writing club piece was, I was literally just on the phone this morning with one of our writing club members who was saying, they're newer to the writing club as, the last, as of the last month or two. And they were saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really liking the writes that I'm doing. It's really fun, but I'm trying, I'm looking for like this specific type of writer and I'm trying to like really find complementary strengths. And that was one of the cool things as someone who knows all the people in the writing club and knows a lot of the strengths, I was able to give them the names of five or six people and say, Hey, tap this person, this person, this person, this person, go do some rights with these guys and then see who's a good mix in there. I think some of them will be a good fit. So that's a piece that honestly I never had. I didn't have anyone else helping me set up rights. That's a massive strength, I think, of our of our uh, writing community is just saying almost a little bit in a small way, acting like a publisher and saying, I think you would fit well with this person or somebody posts a song start in a writing club and says, I want some help with this. And we can say, hey, this person may be good because they're a good content writer or they're a you know structure or prophetic writer or whatever. So it's really helpful I think to have other folks helping to speak in and say hey this would be a good this is your next steps and I think these people would be good to connect with yeah yeah uh we have a almost 40 people in that uh writing club so far and we we hope to have 50 or more by the end of the by the end of this year um Chidia yeah uh I I need to fix that on the website um it does say 199 a month that is the full price it is it is going to be 99 dollars a month when you uh, when you're, you fill out the application and you get an acceptance letter from us, it'll, it'll be the 99 a month, um, 990 a year. Um, so apologies for that, but we'll, we'll fix that. Um, Lisa asks, what if you haven't finished a song yet? I think you're related to, related to applying for the writing club. I think, I think you need to, I need to think you need to finish a song before you apply. Um, uh, to, yeah to either one or send what you have finished of a song yeah yeah even a song start uh or a verse or a chorus something mm -hmm. we do need to get a sense of of that um what is a ccm song contemporary christian music it's basically what you might hear on christian radio during the during the week if you tuned into a christian radio station um and even um you know sirius xm has a Christian radio station. They also have a worship station, and but it's not necessarily a gospel music song. It's it's typically your your straight up pop sounding Christian music. Um, Claire said I should have waited to include my motivation for the scholarship as well as the song. I just included a link to my author page. Yes, you can you can apply as many times as you want um, with a with more, better information, Claire. Um, I'm here to learn what to do with my writing that has been coming. Maybe I don't qualify for the program if I haven't finished a song yet. I don't have a finished song to submit. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we talked. Too, okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Um, yeah. So most of these were answers. Can anyone come to the conference if you're not in the mentorship? Yes. Anyone can come to the conference if you're not in the mentorship. Um, but you wouldn't necessarily be able to participate in the in the uh, co-writing day. So that's something that we uh, wanna make sure that you have some co-writing experience. Mm -hmm. Come on, $99 Jesus. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. all right. Well, anything else, um, Nick or Chrissy that you wanna say to wrap us up? I think we're good.
No, it's been so fun to hang with you all today. It's always like inspiring to me to see so many creative people on one Zoom call. At the yeah. Same. It's very inspiring. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yes. All right. Well, this is really great. Thanks, guys. I'm seeing all the comments. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we love and appreciate you so much. Uh, thank you for spending an hour and 20 minutes with us. Uh, we'll have the recording. So if you missed anything, you'll get the replay. Uh, and we're going to send the replay to, to everybody that registered as well. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing your applications coming in and look forward to helping you and guiding you in your next steps with your songwriting and your worship songwriting. So uh, bless you all. See God you soon. bless you guys. Have a good one.